Nanotechnology, that word only has come about in the last probably six or seven years. Uh, probably always worked in that area. We just didn't know that that was the name that we should be calling it. It's mainly dealing with materials that, on, that are on the nanometer size scale. So that's a billionth of a meter in size, which is kind of hard to comprehend. And when things get to be that small, all the physics and chemistry change. You'll have a large surface area to, ver to a very small volume. You can make chemical reactions happen that normally would not happen. We're hoping that we can take that material and grow it on a surface and use that material to, in the presence of water and sunlight to produce hydrogen. And if you could use the sun's energy, which is falling on the surface of the earth anyways, and then collect the hydrogen that's produced, just splitting water, then you could put it in your automobile, you can run electrical uh, generating facilities with a fuel cell, you could, you could use it for a lot of things. It would be clean, cheap energy. Energy from the sun travels here as, as photons. It's a quantized packet of energy. Average energy of that spectrum is 1.5 electron volts. So if it's 1.5 electron volts arriving here, how much energy would it take to take one water molecule and split it in half? It would take 1.23 electron volts. So on average, there's enough energy in a photon from the sun to break up a water molecule into useful hydrogen and oxygen. So the energy is there, just have to figure out a way to use it. The hydrogen economy is what you hope to go for. So now what do we have? We have the petroleum economy. We have to go to the Middle East and get the oil. On another perspective, uh, this whole concept of global warming. So if we can avoid that problem, uh, as a scientist or as a father, I mean, I have to feel good about that.